All right. What's your name? Scotty. Hey, Scotty, how are you in out this way? Oh, uh, man, uh, uh, actually, got, got off the Riverside Transit bus, RTA, to come out here to visit the hospital. Uh, I have a twin sister, and uh, me and my sister twin, we were born right here on Magnolia at the Kaiser Hospital, and I also came to the, to the um, Social Security office to reinstate my my benefits today, and I also went to the DPSS office welfare to get my, my county food stamps. Okay, what was your childhood like, man? Uh, I was, I was brought up uh, from the time I was born to the time I was like five years old with my mom. She was uh, a drinker. She would be right here at the first of the month every month getting her liquor, or she would be at another liquor store. But long story short, um, my mom, my mom called my my grandma, my grandma Linda, and said, you know, uh, I've been drinking too much and I can't handle the twins anymore my dad was always on the go uh my dad they, he always used to say he was the southern yankee but but like in in, in in when it when it came down to being raised by where i was brought up was ie really all all right here in riverside corona ukaipa norco everywhere a lot of places you know nice yeah and my grandma ended up raising me though man my, my grandma and grandpa linda my grandma linda my grandma tommy and they're, they're Christian people, and they love God, and they, they always had us in church every Sunday. You know, at the skate park right here at Harvest in uh, Riverside, the Harvest Church, we used to be at the skate park. Um, well, not just the skate park, but we used to go to church, and uh, that's where I was saved. I was saved at Harvest Church, um, and, and, um, uh, the youth group, yeah. What, what are some of the biggest lessons you learned out here on the streets about life? Well... From morning to the good night. and the bad. At the at the end of every day, I know that I'm gonna fall asleep, and I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna wake up and have a desire in my heart for something, like every other man, like you, like me, or a woman, like every woman does. You know, um, I know it, being out on the streets is not easy because uh, a lot of people don't have things that it, that it takes to work hard to go to school, to, to go to college. And someday maybe get a job that pays a lot of money but I know that out on the streets money can't buy that uh, when you don't got no money coming from the street side of things uh, humility being humble as if like I could put myself in your shoes or any other man that's got it better than me and be like man wait a minute don't react on what I need at the time but if I could just sacrifice what he, I'm going through to, so that other man can cross the street type thing, you know? Being humble is like the the June bug landing in your hand out of nowhere, and you're like, wow. You know, that's just kind of like, being, being streetwise is, is only good for so long when you have one too many. What, to what's, uh, what are some of the lessons you would give to some of the kids out here that touch it down for the streets for the first time? Man, you know, if, for any, any of the kids, I'd say, no matter what, be yourself. As long as you be yourself and keep it 100, be yourself, keep it 100, and, and just do you and be yourself. Always keep it 100 in your life. Be, be participate in your in your own life. What everybody else says, that's rules. What everybody else, the police, law enforcement, whatever, that's rules of the land. You got to live by them. You don't end up in prison, jail, or prison. Uh, I'd also say that um, study, study your word, the, the Holy Bible. Read it, meditate in it, and become a part of it. Because uh, that's that's in words, you know. Like I know I I never understood the Bible, but it means basic instructions before leaving Earth. Why we're here, this planet? Yeah, it's a lot to look at. People are mean and everything, but I know uh, Scripture, the Bible. Study, study your Bible. Be in your Bible. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been incarcerated? Me, yes, I have. I've been incarcerated uh, so many times. What you go down for, for the uh, longest? I, I got incarcerated for, uh, my first time getting incarcerated was being under the influence of controlled substance and 11-550 health and safety code. Uh, 
Uh, I was caught with the possession of paraphernalia, possession of sales of, of a controlled substance. I was caught and also had a domestic DV, domestic violence with my, uh, the, the mother of my children. Oh, you got some kids? I got, I got like four. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's your drug of choice? Uh, my drug of choice is alcohol. Okay. What, what, when did you notice that was like your, 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 your drug of choice? Was it, when did it become like a thing for well, you? Well, like from the time I, I, from the time I, I turned into a young adult, I, I, I used to go and I, I would stand in front of liquor stores and I would, I'd have my own money because I get allowances, you know, and I, I'd get I'd off to school on a Friday, I'd be going to the movie theater and, you know, like us, us youngsters back then, we knew if we caught the right person that they would probably go in and, you know, hey, sir, could you, and, you know, and then, uh, then I got my first headache, man. I got, I was at a party, high school party, and, and I ended up throwing up and getting a headache and getting real drunk. And I was like, the next morning, why did I do that? You know what I mean? Like, I lost, I lost, my, man, I lost my hat. My new hat was gone. My, I'm barefoot. I'm like, man, you know, uh, my grandma's like mad at me. You know, like, I, it, it wasn't worth it at all. I well, we'll that. be like, uh, we'll, stay, we'll be in second place. For a drug, for a drug of choice, yeah, uh, crystal methamphetamine. So I noticed a lot of the, a lot of the folks out here we've been talking to. What, what, what's the appeal of it? That, uh, that, that make you, what do you think makes it so popular out here? Well, as an individual, we're we're creatures of habit. Um, we 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 do habitual things. We practice the same. Uh, instruments we play the same song like we read the same book we go to the same liquor store i mean like a drug is a drug is a drug to each his own uh it's whatever you make it yourself it's whatever you could say that it is a part of you only you could change it by not doing it again well, how would you compare both of those highs between alcohol and meth for the people out here listening yeah. I'd say I'd have to say the alcohol because it coincides with the methamphetamine. One weighs itself down and the other brings it back up. Do you feel more uh, happy on either one, or is the one that makes you feel like you have a baseline? Man, uh, <laughs> so I talked to I talked to a couple people and they said meth uh, is what keeps them going. You know. You know uh, what? I'd have to say alcohol because. Uh, I, I, I have I could drown myself I could drown my misery with alcohol. Yeah. I can't drown it with meth. I hear you. Because you know, even grown men cry, but yeah. yeah. Do Do you have any regrets? I got a lot of regrets, dude. I do. I got a lot of regrets. Bro. What's one in your mind right now? The first time I ever stole from him, from my dad, I stole money out of his wallet. And, uh, my grandma caught me, I think. It's, it's been so long ago. There's a lot of to have a list of all, but I know it. Uh, it's most important to not steal because stealing it gives bad energy to people who work in, in corporations and businesses and, and, and people who have jobs, even in the church. I know uh, being homeless, uh, being homeless on the streets. It's been four, four years now for me, three or four years. Oh man! And I haven't stole from any store, or corporation, or anywhere all over that like, wherever I'm at people still allow me if I passed out right here right now that the guy in the store probably wouldn't even care about it because he knows I, I ain't gonna steal nothing from him. so I see you are by yourself do you, do you keep it uh, lonely to, to make sure no one's in your stuff and taking your stuff or do you like hanging out and meeting people and hanging out in groups you know I, I, I really I really generally would like to help others who, who don't who are less fortunate and uh, you know I, I, I'm a triple C master have meant, suffer from mental illness and uh, um, my heart goes out to a lot of those people because like uh, some of them can't walk out a door from a, from a from a hospital and they can't remember where they were at they can't they can't even figure out how to get down the street yeah and they're all over everywhere in Riverside you know and uh, uh, my heart goes out to those people man and when you uh, be with you you too when you talk about your uh, your family situation was it a situation of marrying the wrong person, or you just weren't ready for that yet? I can encourage every kid, every child, every teenager, every young adult. Before you get in, before you get into even taking that gym, you putting that gym on, or even thinking about having sexual intercourse, 
practice routine safety because I have no regrets in knocking out my baby mom and getting her pregnant. We planned all of our kids. By being safe is being abstinent, but thinking outside the shell of the brain on, is this going to be uh, beneficial for this child? Is it going to be beneficial for us to make it? Are we going to be able to have this for the child? Are we going to have a house, an income, a, a bank account? Are we going to have shoes and socks? Are we going to have underwear, diapers? Are we going to have everything for these kids? Are we even in love with each other for these kids? Like, and I'm just being, and I'm, I'm encouraging this to the up and coming youth. Put God before any any man, any any best friend, any any girl, any relationship. Put God first, because that's the kingdom you want to get in is heaven. I want to get in is heaven. So talk talk to me about like those choices you said you have to make. Uh, did you do the opposite of that? Like how how did that work out? Where you guys man, split? Choices, I'm still I'm still twiddling my thumb on choices, man. Yeah. But the best choice that I did that I decide to make, um, it, it's probably gonna come to me tomorrow morning. Like I said, I'm gonna wake up with a desire in my heart for something, and I know it's probably gonna be a cigarette. Cause that's what, that's what I, you know I'm addicted to. So I haven't quit smoking for 25 years, so I got yeah. me a pack right here. So I'm trying to hold on to. <laughs> Would you like to give any shout outs to anyone? Uh, yeah, I would like to. I would like to give out some shout outs to the. Um, I like to give a shout out to the Salvation Army Paris program, located in the, in the city of Paris. Um, I'd like to give out sh shouts out to the Telecare Mental Health Facilities Riverside in Paris, RI International ETS, um, Reno Valley Hospital uh, Unified. Uh, um, Corona Unified School District, uh, Riverside School District, Corona Police Department, Riverside Police Department, Paris Police Department, uh, Magnolia, uh, uh, the Magnolia Nice Liquor, I guess, like, shout out to them, and uh, all the families and everywhere, um, uh, uh, Harvest Church, uh, Set Free Ministries, Set Free Christian Discipleship Ministries, um, uh, I'd like to give shouts out to the Good Hope community of Paris. I'd like, I'd like you guys to lift them up. Good Hope, Lake Elsinore. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to my, sister, my twin sister, Katie, my little sister, Katie, my little brother, Avery, my grandmother, Linda, my grandma, my grandpa, Tommy, my sons, Colin, Shane, Blake, Shane, Blake, and, and a little baby girl, Laura. Um, I like to give a shout out to everybody that's out there less fortunate than, than, than anybody in this time, in this day and time. That we have. Hey man, we appreciate your time and hope it works out for the best. Thank you.